before I answer that, let me tell you about an argument that I'm having, like frequently, with one of our head instructors, one of, one of my best friends and the really head instructor of CR, Kian. Uh, he's sitting right over there, and Kian is by far the greatest instructor I have ever seen. He has performed so magical results out of students that you really can't believe your eyes at times. I come to boot camps, I'm like, oh, motherfucker, what the fuck are we going to do with this student? <laughs> it's like a lost case. And magically, Kian comes in like, you know, like a knight on a white horse and just saves the day. I mean, I've seen people lose their virginities <laughs> on boot camps. People who are like 35 virgins and you think like, yeah, this is going to take time. And nope, one night, one night with Kian. That's how it works. One of our greatest instructors, no doubt. And we always have this, we frequently have this kind of argument that eventually led me to this speech. And that is, usually when I coach, I tend to try to teach people my kind of game. I try to teach people my kind of game. And when Kian sees that, he usually stops me. He says, dude, you can't, you can't teach out that opener. It's not going to work. I said, like, it works for me. He said, yeah, but, you know, people are different. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, look at you. Look at them. They are different. And so we continually have these, um, these arguments where I'm like, yeah, but you see, it's if you do it right. And he says, yeah, but you need to be able to do it right. If, but if you, you can't do it right, it's not going to work. And so we always, we, 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 like, we explore this whole thing. What is doing certain techniques or certain um, routines or whatever you want to call it right? What does it come down to? Let me tell you about two openers, two of my favorite openers at the moment. Um, the, one, the first is really simple, yet genius. It goes like this. I just approach, like, let me first tell you about my game. My game is aimed towards the tents. Like, I go out to nightclubs. That's my favorite thing to do. I go out to nightclubs. And I always aim for the high social status tense. Have I ever gone home with a woman of less beauty? Yeah, but it's more of an exception and really it's not what I want. I'm never satisfied with that. I always go for the 10. And truth be told, you guys paid a lot of money. I don't think you should settle for less either. Now, I'm not saying you should all aim for you know, the nightclub 10, but you should definitely always go after what you want. Don't ever forget that. However, so my game is pretty much geared towards that hardcore kind of stuff. And uh, yet some of the things I do are really simple. Like, for example, this opener. It goes like this. I, go up, I walk up to a woman and I'm like, hi, I don't recognize you. Who are you? That's my opener. Hi, I don't recognize you. Who are you? Uh, the second opener is a little bit more advanced. I don't know. Um, it, goes, it goes like this. I go up to a woman and I say, Hi, um, I'm sorry, this may seem really rude, but are you good with compliments? She usually says yes. And I say, I just love your ass. May I see it? And I take her hand and I turn her, spin her slowly around. And those two are my favorite openers. And they worked pretty much like magic for me. Uh, I don't know, for some of you guys, just the thought of using those openers may scare you to death, especially when you think that, you know, I'm use this on tens. Maybe you think it's really easy. I don't know. But let me tell you why they work and why they don't work. Let's take the first opener. Hi, I don't recognize you. Who are you? Why does it work? If you imagine a really, uh, like a really beautiful woman, she has high social status. Everybody knows who she is. Like she knows everybody who is somebody knows who she is. And she should know them. When you go up and say, hi, I don't recognize you. Who are you? And you say that in that kind of tone, you're conveying that Hi, I'm someone, and I usually know the hot chicks in this place, so who are you? That is what you are conveying. Um, to put it in a very simple way, you are speaking the language of somebody's, to put it in a very horrible yet correct way. The other opener, the whole I love your ass, is really great because you're a douchebag while at the same time being gentleman. See, hi, I'm sorry, this is going to sound rude. Are you good with compliments? And you say, I love your ass. May I see it? And at the same time, you're giving a compliment which women actually care about. Otherwise, they would never bother having high heels. But let's, let's see. Are everybody going to be able to pull this off? I mean, I am not allowed to teach these openers at boot camps. Kian, uh, he would, man, he would punch me. He's a one fierce motherfucker. 
if I would <laughs> if I would teach this to the regular student, yeah, I would get punched in the stomach. Why? And this is the argument we are frequently having. There are some requirements needing to be met in order for these to work. Imagine a guy that stutters, who is nervous, his hands are sweating every time he approaches a woman, and he tries to pull that off. Like he goes out and he, you know, he has this the chode walk. You know, some guys they get so nervous they do the chode dance. <laughs> and then you go, you go up to a woman and he's like, "Hi, uh, I, I, I don't recognize you. Um, who are you?" Get lost. Usually, uh, that's what, what's going to happen. Or in some cases, the woman may actually be, you know, polite because she sees he's nervous and she's like, "Oh no, I'm just, you know, whoever the fuck I am." And they'll have a friendly conversation for two minutes, and then she'll probably have to go to the bathroom. Uh, and the same thing goes with other opener. Same thing. It's you know, it's just gonna backfire. For me, they work like magic most of the time when I pull them, like when I pull them off, right? But it's hard to pull them off correct. That's the thing. That's the myth about the community that you can, like, if you're if you do a routine. Like if you continually repeat a routine, eventually you're gonna be able to pull it off right. But I don't really, I don't really believe that. I mean, even with the basic stuff like negging, if you, like if you can't hold eye contact or hold up a conversation, negging is not going to work. You just, <laughs> you're just gonna seem really weird. See, 90% of your game is not your game. It's you. I don't care. 90% of your game is not your game. It's just you. Let's view with it. Let's try to distinguish about the 90% with the 10%. Let's say that game, or let's say you're a product. See, game is just a sales pitch. Outer game or techniques or whatever, it's just a sales pitch. You are the product that you're selling, that your game is selling. You are the product. And the woman, <laughs> in this case, is the customer. And I don't care what any marketing people says. When it comes to game, just a great sales pitch won't work. And if it does, you'll get a lot of refunds <laughs> if the product sucks. And since, you know, you're probably not going to do commercials worldwide <laughs> on TV. You're not going to have such a great market. So you, in a way, you're kind of limited. And I mean, if you're a guy who, you know, most of the time you sit at home, uh, you're bored out, uh, you play Xbox as a distraction, um, and, you know, once in a while you rent a movie to, you know, spike things up. And then you go out and you know you put on the sales pitch like, "Hi, I'm." That's pretty much you're trying to convey you're this cool person, you have this awesome lifestyle. I mean, even if you happen to fool anyone with that, and you know the whole the rest of you does not shine through, even if you pull that off, you can be pretty sure that you ended up with either a stupid, uh, someone stupid, or someone who has no standards. So I mean, no, nobody should settle for that. So really, the problem is the point I'm trying to get across is. Don't work so much on your sales pitch, at least not until you have your product handled. Until you is someone you can think of like as cool. That's, that's pretty much what I'm trying to say here. I want to talk about being cool, becoming a cool person. Sorry, I always mix whatever I drink. I like, like bitter. Sweet, neutral. So, the product. I mean, think about it this way. Think about your dream, like the woman of your dreams, right? How can you get the woman of your dreams? What would be the easiest way to get the woman of your dreams? Could anybody tell me that? Anybody who wants to like try to answer that? Yes. Being yourself. Being yourself? Like, be the man yeah. of your dreams. Correct. Uh, I'm not saying you're wrong. <laughs> Absolutely not. But that's what I'm trying to say. The easiest way to get the woman of your dreams is if you would 
become, or if you already are, the, woman, the man of her dreams. That's basically what it is. I mean, if you're not the kind of man she wants, then you are gonna, you're always going to be have to struggling. You always, it will always be a struggle. It will always be a struggle to keep up, to keep appearances, to keep um, you know, the illusion that you are. Because basically, you, know, you can't fool anyone. I mean, we, you know, we are all, all individuals. We are all in the pursuit of happiness. And I mean, that's in that in and out of itself is going to hinder your, I mean, your game if you're not that kind of guy. And at the same time, you know, it's very subjective. That's the thing, like, you don't get taught in the community. It's very subjective. Like, we, we get taught that <coughs> there is this universal thing <coughs> of, like, being alpha, which it kind of is. But there is more than that. There are t different types of guys. There are different kinds of men. Uh, some women like, you know, rockers. Other women, they hate rockers. They can't stand them. Like, some women can't imagine being with anyone else than this Muttley Crew character. Other women, they're like, man, he's disgusting. Why the fuck is he having eyeliners? It's very different. It's very subjective. And if you want to make it easy for yourself, figure out what kind of woman do you want and what kind of men do they want. And I mean, usually, there's a match. The kind of man you want to be is usually the kind of man she wants. And you need to start working towards that. Have I gotten my point across here? Yeah. That game is just a sales pitch. And really, it's not unnecessary. I mean, if you combine a great product with a great marketing, you're game. <laughs> you're going to do awesome. But it's just the 10%. You don't need to start working on that. If your product is not what you want it to be, then you know, start there. That's my, really my point that I'm trying to get across. I'm trying to convince you that don't focus so much on the sales pitch. I mean, I, I heard that Babo was here yesterday. and he gave you these great openers, uh, which are really amazing when you think about them. And they are awesome, but truth be told, I don't see a lot of people in the world being able to pull that off because they don't have the prerequisites to make those openers work. I mean, you go up to a woman, I heard you said something like, you are so beautiful, I wanna fuck you right now. It's a really awesome thing. I mean, if you can pull that off, uh, and, a and you can make in a way that women actually, like, they consider it. <laughs> Uh, which I don't think it's I don't think it's possible. I mean, we've tried it's like kind of similar stuff. The only thing is, if you don't have the prerequisites for that kind of opening, it's never gonna work. You're just gonna creep people out. And that's my point here. You need to work on the product. So, what is cool? What is being cool? Let's just throw a couple of things out here. Social skills. Um, social connections, humor, being in great shape, um, having a great fashion sense, um, like having an admirable skill, like for example, being a musician, uh, being able to, you know, having a motorcycle, motorbike, all these things, you know, they make you cool. But the truth is, truth is, I don't need to tell you this. Truth is, you have already heard this. I am not the first person to talk about these kind of stuff. Yet, a lot of people, I see a lot of students, they are more concerned with what opener should I use tonight than, are these shoes really good? Is, does my hair look good? Um, does my breath smell? Man! <laughs> if I got some money for every time we had a student with a bad breath, I'd be rich. I mean, they're more concerned with their opener, but they don't give a fuck that whatever they say, the woman's gonna be like, man! Can you please speak that way? It's kind of weird when you think about it. It's pretty much like basic. You sh everybody should know this. I mean, I'm not throwing out secret knowledge here. <laughs> it's just really basic stuff that everybody can agree to. I'm just trying to really remind you of it and really try for once in a while, hammer it in so that you don't let your focus slip away. Your opener doesn't really matter that much. If you have the prerequisites, all openers will most of the time work. So one thing 
like what my speech is really going to be about this is all just introduction i'm just trying to make you listen i'm really like up until now i was just trying to make convince you guys of what needs to be done uh, now i'm going to focus on how do you go about changing yourself how do you go about becoming cool and it's not going to be about inner game it's not going to be about stand in front of a mirror and repeat words those things those tools are really awesome i mean they are really good uh, for most, I mean, a lot of guys have gotten a lot of things out of them. Um, but I will try to, like, I have tried, when I thought about my speech, I thought I want to have something that, you know, if you, it's not just beneficial for you, it's beneficial for everyone, it's beneficial for your life, it's beneficial, uh, and it's also something that you could see, like, when, I, when I'm going to tell you these stuff, you're going to, I want you guys to realize how, yes, I can see how this is going to change me. And so it's been a really struggle trying to figure out how do you change yourself. Like if you, see, I mean, this is the thing. Everybody are different, right? Some of you guys don't even need to hear, listen to this. I have a friend among you who I said, you know what? <laughs> I'm sorry, but <laughs> you're not going to get your money worth of my speech because you already have this shit down. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, everybody's different. This doesn't apply to everyone. But if you're, like, say you're on the far end where your social life is deteriorated, um, you're this guy who play Xbox to get distracted. Um, you're broke most of the time, and most of the time you're bored. Then this is the stuff you need to hear. Hopefully, this is stuff that's going to help you change. Change is painful. That's the first thing you need to know. Change is painful. You think approach anxiety is painful? No, it's not. Change is painful. Because you take away your own familiarity. You know, whatever happens, I mean, if the whole movie 2012 would be true and, you know, the world all of a sudden goes down and everything changes, at least you'll know who the fuck you are. <laughs> at least I'm not changing. At least this is still this. That, like, that's the only comfort we have most of the time. Like, I know who I am, sort of. And when you try to change that, it's, it gets scary. You don't recognize yourself anymore. You feel like you feel like your feet are trembling. That is why change is so hard because it's really scary. I mean, to go up to a woman and say, "Hi, I think you're beautiful," and she says, "I mean, you get a bad rejection." That's nothing compared to changing. But that does not mean it's impossible. And I'm not saying this to scare you guys off. I'm just saying this because, as I said before, I'm all for positive. Woohoo! But really. You need to be realistic. You need to be positively realistic. It's painful and get prepared for that. And truth be told, it's worth it. Not only for the women. Not only for the women. It's just worth it. I mean, it's you. This is you. It's your life. You gotta live it the way you want to live it. So, the four, I've like taken out four what I think four really important things you need to do with your life in order to make a lasting change. Um, <clears throat> they are very simple, but they are also very like huge areas that you need to be to be improving constantly. And hopefully, you can understand why this works and why they are so important. Are you guys ready for step one, or at least the first point? Are you guys ready? Friends, I don't know if there's an English expression for this, but there's a, definitely a Swedish expression that says, you become like the person, like your peers. You become like your peers. Who you hang out with will eventually influence what you become like. And I'm not saying you guys to dump your friends. That is, I would never ever recommend anyone to do that. I think it's stupid. Um, unless there's a good reasons for it, like if you're not really friends and you're just dicks to each other. Um, but no, friends are important, like really important. And especially, I mean, when I say friends, I mean all, kind of all kinds of relationships. Like getting a mentor, for example. Like getting someone who, you know, once in a while speaks to you, tells you, gives you feedback, um, tells you how, what he, how he perceives you. That in and out of yourself is just, you know, it's really valuable. And also, I mean, most of the guys 
most of the people I have, like, I don't know, I wouldn't even say most of the people, like all the people I have ever met that are good with women, hang with people who are good with women. Sure, they have a couple of friends who, you know, are more or less bad. But you know, like you have seen those sitcoms where they are all just regular folks and there's this one guy who always gets laid. That, that doesn't exist. Those social circles does not usually exist. Or if they do, this guy at least half of the time he hangs out with other guys who are good with women. Like everybody I have ever met that are good with women have friends who are good with women. That's just the way it goes because we become as our peers. And you should always try to work towards getting people in your life that have achieved the kind of stuff you want to achieve. It is super important. It is super important. You have to be kind of strategical about what kind of people you have in your life. I mean, some people drag you down. Some people, you, I, I mean, a lot of people have friends who they're not actually friends with. It's just that, you know, life threw them into the same room and they didn't have any other choice. I mean, most, I mean, a lot of people have friends they don't even like. And in that case, you know, you need to get, you need to realize this stuff. And you need to, you know, do actions towards changing it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Cool. Second about friends is female friends. Female friends are important. They are super important. Have you ever heard about social proof? Ever heard about pre-selection? Every time you go out, <laughs> that will come for free. I mean, if for nothing else, if for nothing else, every time you go out, you will have free pre-selection, free social proof. You don't even have to work on it. You go into a club with two chicks, and they're good looking, and they like you, and they, you know, they hang with you. You got it handled. You don't need to run around getting social proof. If for nothing else, <clears throat> never mind like all the fashion advice you're gonna get. Never mind all the, you know, jealousy they're gonna be able to create with other chicks. Never mind just the friendship in and out of itself. All of these stuff are really beneficial, and they add value to your life. They add happiness. I mean, I've always wanted to have little sisters. I've always wanted to have sisters. Always mad at my mom. Why didn't you give me any sisters? I hate you. Why didn't you ever give me sisters? I had to give me this fucking brother who's always nagging. And then I realized, well, <laughs> I have friends. I have female friends. I treat them like sisters. I mean, some of them are really, like, hot. But yet, people, people ask, so, yeah, you're banging her, right? Nope. I don't. Sorry to disappoint you. I'm this super PUA. I'm not even banging this chick. Nope, I'm not. I mean, some people even doubt it. They're like, yeah, fuck you. You're banging each other, right? Ah, you didn't, yeah, didn't you go home together last night? Yes, we did. We shared a bed. She was half naked. So was I. We did not sleep. Why? Because I tried to treasure it. I tried to treasure the relationship. I tried to really um, enjoy it. It's beneficial, like the relationship in and out of itself is really, it's um, giving. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? It's giving. It's just wonderful. And the same thing with all your friends. I mean, you should enjoy all your friends. And, you should, and if you can't do that, that means you shouldn't be friends. I really believe that. If you can't enjoy your friends, you shouldn't be friends. And it's, again, it's no secret knowledge, yet you see people all the time that don't do this stuff. Like, I'm not here to give you knowledge you don't have. I'm just here to remind you of what you already know. And hopefully hammer it in so you, that you will change this stuff. So that it will be imprinted in you. <sighs> and before I leave, friends, there are more stuff. Um, I'm trying to get the English word for this. You know, there are friends, you know, people you hang out with. And then there are acquaintances, you know, people who you just, you know, you say hi to. That is also very valuable. I mean... Be nice to people. Be respectful. There is one thing in our forum, like in the Charismatic Revolution forum going on, there are some guys who have taken this whole alpha thing a little bit too far, and they're like, no man should be disrespected. A real man, he, never, he, he always breaks rapport. He always breaks rapport. A real man breaks rapport. You know, a real man, he can be on his own. He can be on his own. Yeah, maybe. A real man can maybe be on his own. Um, maybe... He can get a lot of stuff. Maybe a lot of women get turned on by that. But you know what? Maybe you'll be on the top. It's going to be fucking lonely. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> You're going to be standing there. Woohoo! Hi. Oh, there's nobody to high five. 
If for nothing else, <laughs> if you want to be that guy, you'll have no one to high five. <laughs> if for nothing else, I like high fives. How many people like to high five their friends? I love high fiving, man. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, but not only that, if you're respectful, like seriously, if you're respectful to people and you appreciate people and you don't try to be, um, you don't try to be um, like a burden to people. Instead, you try to be this helpful guy. It's gonna get. It's gonna go back. Especially when you go out to clubs. I mean, if you're not this, like say bouncers, for example, if you're not this guy who's like, man, can I come in, come on, come in, come on, come in, like, come on, man, oh, and you're just always nagging, always uh, whining. You think they're ever gonna be nice to you? No. Maybe they're not gonna be nice to you the first times, but if you're nice to them frequently, eventually it's gonna catch on. And after three months, four months, you won't have to stand in line anymore. Is that not beneficial if you're thinking about having a lifestyle where you go out four times a night, four times a week, of course. Same thing, bartenders, uh, same thing, like when you, go, when you go down to the grocery store, I mean seriously, how many people, like that is also one of these ridiculous things that everybody knows, yet nobody, does, like most people don't ever do this. I mean you live in the same house, apartment for five years and you don't even know the name of the people who work at the grocery store where you buy your stuff all day, like every day? That is ridiculous, really. <laughs> like, they don't know you, you don't know them. That is just ridiculous. That, it's not beneficial for anyone. I mean, you're going to be there for a long time. You should get to know them, they should get to know you, they should like you. I mean, I remember uh, once we had this Project Gothenburg kind of thing, and we were so good with the people <laughs> in our grocery store, because when they finished out, we were like, guys, come up, let's take a zip. Like, most of the time, when we went to buy groceries, like, we went down with, like, pajamas and stuff, and I'm like, hi, man. Oh, fuck. I'm having a headache. Um, cool. Um, and it became this really intimate relationship. And I mean, the beneficials of that is, you know, if, like, if they have something on sale, like if they have a discount or something and there's just one, something left and they know you like this stuff, like say some certain meat, like chicken, if they see that they have chicken breasts and they're starting to get, like, you know, there's not any more of them, like there's just two packages left, and it's a discount, and they know you like chicken, they're going to save it up for you. I mean, you, you get my point, right? Like, it's always beneficial. It's always beneficial, yet people don't do this. They don't take the time to be friendly to people, to be respectful, and get to know people. I mean, you don't have to be friends with everybody, but at least be good acquaintances. So that was friends. We have three more things to go through, but we're going to make sure you guys get food in your stomachs. It's really important. I've heard that uh, it's quite vital. Um, it's a prerequisite to living, I've heard. <clears throat> and so therefore, we're going to take a break. All right, uh, so we're back from the break. And as you may remember, before we took the break, I was talking about friendship, about um, getting beneficial friendships. Um, I talked about, for example, getting acquainted with people who are beneficial for you. I also talked about getting female friends, how that will help you. And not only that, how it's really enjoyable. Uh, and then I talked about how basically everyone I've ever met who are good with women hang around with other people who are good with women. You become as your peers. And that is why this is so super important. Next thing I'm going to talk about is fashion. It's really important to get a sense of fashion. Why? The first reason why is you become like you tend to become like how you are dressed. How you dress affects you, affects your behavior. If you're dressed very sloppy, you will feel sloppy. If you dress very businesslike, very straight, you know, you have a tie up your uh, throat, you'll be very professional. Uh, if you're dressed in a, you know, very, in a party outfit, you'll feel more like partying. The way you dress actually affects you. That is one of the main reasons why it's important to dress up. Why fashion is really important. It affects your behavior. It puts you into a stereotype. And it's really easy to live up to that stereotype. Actually, it's hard not to live up to that stereotype. So if you dress up like, you know, if you dress up like a chode or whatever you want to call it, if you dress up like a normal guy who, who's shy, if you're clothing puts you in a stereotype where it seems like you're shy, it will be hard not to be shy. 
because you will fall into that stereotype. Now, when we talk about fashion, it's really hard because there is such a variety of different styles and different um, tastes, different flavors. But generally, people, they don't, like, a lot of, a lot of, gu a lot of guys really handle this easily. They have a cool haircut, uh, they have awesome shoes, um, their pants look really good, and that's awesome, that is really good. It's really important, it's super important, but some people, they don't even think about it. Or maybe they do, I don't know, but they don't seem to be thinking about it. And that's why I'm taking this up, because you should always review your fashion. What is this saying about me? <coughs> what stereotype is it putting me into? And is it a stereotype that I want to be put into? And is it a stereotype that helps me? Do you understand the importance of this? Another thing about fashion is, if you, you know, there are people who can dress up good, but they look really normal, like, like they blend into walls. And then you have the, you know, I just got into community and mystery taught me peacocking, and now all of a sudden they look like, yeah, like a peacock. <laughs> they look like a bird, walking bird, like they have feathers up their butt. That is also like, it's a, it's an extreme in the other end of the spectrum. Um, what I am suggest suggesting is, you know, find the kind of style that you are comfortable with, that you feel like it puts me into the stereotype I want to. Like if, you're a ro if you like rock music, dress like a cool rocker. Um, if you like uh, hip hop, dress like a hip hopper. But put your personal um, touch to it. Try to make it original. I mean, copy and then do your own version of it. And the more, you, the more you actually, the more time and effort you actually put into you know, your clothing, the way you dress, the way you look, your hair, the better you will become at it. I mean, today I hear all the time people saying, people, especially women, they say I'm really good looking. That wasn't always the case. I really experimented with myself. I really, you know, tried to make the best out of me, to really become the best self. And in all areas, and this fashion and looks things, it was one of them. And now I feel like I've come to a place where I feel really comfortable with the way I look. And I've, come, I've gotten to a point where it, you know, it gives me a lot of advantages. Everybody can do this. I don't care what you think about your jeans, your nose. Yeah, this, that's actually a funny thing. <clears throat> the first pickup technique I taught myself. Let me tell you about this. Today, <laughs> I hear all the time that I'm a really good looking man. Let me just tell you this to put it into perspective. When I was 12 years old, I was really shy about my nose. I had a complex, uh, like my nose, I was like, it's huge, it's horrible. The first pickup technique I taught myself was, we went to these discotheques, like they had discos for kids. And the way you would go about to, you know, try to hook up with some little girl <laughs> was you would dance, you would come up from behind and you would dance with her. And then there was this crucial moment where the woman, oh, the girl, turned around to see if you're hot. And if you were hot enough, you could dance and eventually you would kiss, right? My pickup technique was when that crucial moment came, I would be forced to look straight forward. They would, like, I would never allow them to see me from the side because I thought that that would be so horrible. No! And I was convinced about this. I was like, I'm not good looking. From, you know, if you look at me from, you know, um, Straightforward, nah, I look pretty decent, but from the side, I look horrible. I really, like, I really thought that. And today, I consider myself a really good-looking guy. And there, the reason why I'm telling you this is because I know a lot of people don't think they are good-looking. A lot of guys walk around and they're like, yeah, no, man, I was born ugly. I don't, I don't really buy into that. I really don't buy into that. I remember once um, I saw a like, similar convention like this one. And there was this one guy speaking. I don't remember his name. He was he had a really he had a really good speech, but I realized something after 40 minutes of him talking. I realized, wait a minute, this guy is actually ugly. But I didn't notice it. Like it took me 40 minutes to notice this guy is actually not like his face is kind of weird. Like he's not really good looking. But it took me 40 minutes because he had such great style. Like he was. 
he had really nice pants, really nice shoes. His jacket was just like amazing. And his haircut was awesome. And I, it took me 40 minutes to realize, if you think about it in, like, in the sense of jeans, he's not that good looking, but nobody will give a fuck because he knows how to dress up. So don't shoot yourself down. Don't feel like, no, nah, why should I work on my clothing when I'm ugly? It's not true. It is not true. Unless, like, there is something totally wrong with your face, there is no point for you to think that you're ugly. Um, I have actually a friend, half of his face is burned off. Like, literally burned off. He was in an accident. The other face, the other side is quite normal and he's actually quite good looking. He gets laid. Like, he, women find him attractive because he is comfortable with his burned side. He looks like Two-Face, you know, from Batman. <laughs> he, he actually looks like Two-Face. It's like the first, like when, you, when you see him, the first time you see him, you think, man, that is so horrible. But then you, you start to get used to it, and you see that he is really comfortable, and he has a great sense of fashion, great sense of style. And, I mean, you know, he, he doesn't have a, a lot of hair. You know, this side is kind of quite burnt, but <laughs> the little hair he has, you know, he, he makes something great with it. And after a while, you're like, man, he, he becomes normal. He becomes really good looking, even though half his face is burned off. So this is super important. Having a great sense of fashion is super important. Take time. Watch people. Watch how other people dress up. If you see someone, you think, oh, man, that is really nice. Like, uh, he, that's a really good outfit. Try to copy it. Try to make your own version of it. Don't leave it up to chances. This is super important. This is the first impression, and not only the first impression of what other people uh, perceives you. As I said, this is the most important part. How you dress affects your behavior. If you dress sloppy, you're going to feel sloppy. If you're dressed in a very business-like way, you're going to feel business-like. The way we dress affects our behavior. This is the most important reason for fashion. Is this clear for you? I'll jump into my next point. The third way to become more a cool person is you have to pay your dues. You have to pay your dues in life. Now, what, what do I mean? See, I told you before that some people, they think that... Like, I remember one student I have. It was quite ridiculous. His life was really boring. And he said so. He said, my life is quite boring. I sit at my couch most of the time. Like, I come home from work. I sit at my couch or the computer, and I watch a movie, play a video game, and I go to sleep. And he said, but I'm not unhappy. It's just, I wanted to be like this. I just figured that, you know, I'll get some game, and I'll have some women in that picture, and then I'm good. I was like, no, <laughs> that's ridiculous. You can't get good game and still have this, because 90% of your game is not your game. It's you. If your life is boring, and even you think it's boring, but just like you're not unhappy to change it, then you know it's not gonna help. You're still going to be boring. Your sales pitch is only gonna get you so far. And not only that, some other people like if you're overweight or if you're if you're like slacking or if you're broke, if you have issues that are distracting, that are you know, like a burden in your chest, all of this will affect you. If you don't handle your life in a good way, you're going to be troublesome. You're going to be having worries. And that's not going to help you. How many people here have seen, like, material on how to handle your state? How many people? Like, how to pump your state. How many people have seen how to pump your state? Like, how you do the starfish, or how you dance to get into state, how you listen to good music. Do you find those things effective? I do. Those are really good state management tools. But the best state management tool, or you know, whatever you want to call it, the best thing I've ever heard, the best advice to get, in, get into good state has come, again, from my co-instructor, Kian. He understands this perfectly. He says, you know what your state is? If you want to have a good state, great state on Friday, do you know when you start working on that state? Monday morning. Your state on Friday, your state management on Friday night starts on Monday morning. 
How do you handle your life? When you go to work, do you slack or do you do your things? When you come home, do you clean your house? Do you cook uh, like a healthy dinner or do you eat pizza all the time? Do you work out? Like when Friday comes, are you like, yes? Are you proud of yourself? Are you feeling like, man, this week has been awful. Yeah, let's get drunk and go out and be distracted. Your state on Friday nights, your state management begins on Monday morning. This is paying your dues, taking care of your life, handling your issues, improving your life, making it better, making something you can be proud of. If you're overweight and you're unhappy about it, do something about it. It's not, it's, I mean, it's, it's the important thing is not that you have to look like, you know, uh, like a statue carved out of stone by Mitchell, Michelangelo himself. That's not the important part. The important part, are you proud of who you are? If you're not, it's going to be hard to convince anyone else to be. You need to pay your dues. It's super important. If you have something... If you have something unresolved in your life, you need to solve it. Are you with me so far? Cool. Lastly, oh yeah, I can stand up because uh, <laughs> I have a black shirt. Uh, cool. Oh. Lastly, the last way or really good way to improve, uh, to improve your coolness, or you know, become a better person, attract whatever. When it comes to women, is you need sexual experience. And I know this sounds kind of harsh or kind of counterproductive. Like it feels like catch twenty two, doesn't it? So to get sex, I need to already have sex. <laughs> I know it sounds counterintuitive or like a catch twenty two phrase, but it's actually not. See. When people think, when most guys think of sexual experience, they think about not just in the belt, how many women have I slept with? You know what? When I was, when I was 18, yeah, before I turned 18, I had slept with like, I don't know, maybe 50 women. And I had friends who had only slept with two women. They were more sexual experienced than me. You know why? Because out of those 50 women, most of them was just one-night stands. While my friends who only slept with two women, one maybe was a one-night stand, the other one was a girlfriend, they had sex with every day for like two years. That is like 700 lace. <laughs> well, I had only gotten 50. Do you see my point? It's not the notches in the belt. Um, it's going to be like if you're a virgin, say for example you're a virgin, then it's going to be hard, but you're going to have to struggle. You're going to have to struggle to find, to get over that threshold. But not only that, some guys, they have even had girlfriends, but they still have sexual experience. Why? Because they didn't put any time and effort into the sex. They just did it as a standard routine. You know, we're together, so we have sex. Dick in, dick out, dick in, dick out. They didn't experiment with it. Uh, for, in order for you to be sexual comfortable, you need to experience and experiment with your sexuality. So try, what I'm trying to, what I'm recommending is find a partner. It doesn't have to be a girlfriend. It doesn't have to be a fuck buddy. Just someone who is as curious as you are about sex and explore it, explore sexuality. It doesn't have to be that you need to sleep with 20 women. Now I'm sexually experienced. I've had a lot of variety. I've had a Chinese. I've had a uh, African. I've had a Latina. That's not sexual experience, man. That's, you know, it's just... You know, yeah, it's a smorgasbord, yeah. It's not sexual experience. It's just, you know how different women look naked. That's what it is. Sexual experience is exploring your own sexuality and also the female sexuality or the opposite sex sexuality. Something. And that is what I recommend you guys to do. If you're a virgin or if you're a partnerless, I really urge you to Try to find a partner. It doesn't have to be the woman of your dreams. It doesn't have to be um, someone you connect 100% with. It just has to be someone who share your curiosity about sex and explore it. Get sexually experienced. Get comfortable with your sexuality. That is what sexual experience is. 
you understand me? Yes, sir. So, so far, what do I say? The four ways to improve yourself is first, friends, friendship. Get friends who are beneficial. Get friends that, you know, friends who make the best out of you. Try to find people who, who helps you improve. Second, fashion sense. Review your fashion. Think about your fashion. Uh, think about the way you dress. Think about the way, how the way you dress affects you. Third, pay your dues. Solve like your bullshit. Get a happy life. Improve your life. Don't try to get rid of all the burdens you have in your chest. As I said, your state on a Friday night starts on a Monday, Monday morning. And fourth, get sexual experience. Doesn't mean to have sex with a lot of women. It only means explore your sexuality and get comfortable with sex. Do you have any questions? Super clear? Awesome. That means. Yeah. So, with the exploring sexuality, you're saying you gave like the two uh, examples of like dating a girl or being in some sort of relationship with a girl and having a lot of having sex a lot, like many, many times over, versus like the the bajillion same that lays, which is where the category I'm actually in, like with you, yeah. at least you you were in. Would you also say there was like a third option of like exploring new sexual endeavors with girls you meet out? It's kind of like an in between to those two things. Absolutely, See what I'm saying? like there are like uh, there are different kinds of sexual experiences. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, if you focus on only getting one night stands, uh, and that is the only sexual experience you get, you don't get sexual. Uh, you don't get a variety of sexual experience. You just get a lot of one kind of sexual experience. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, sleeping with a lot of women is one kind of sexual experience that you know you should experience if that's you know what you're curious about. But there are a lot of things about sexuality that you can explore. And the easiest thing is to just get one partner and explore the different kinds of uh, sexual experience you can have with one partner. It's a really easy way. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a good and it's a beneficial way, both for you, you and the partner. Um, I usually say, like, one thing I've said is I was actually a virgin until I met my first girlfriend. Because before that, I haven't had sex. <laughs> I had just jerked off inside of women. <laughs> Because that, I mean, that's the big difference when you know you get you get really good uh, comfort with a woman, and you get so comfortable with yourself, and you start exploring your own sexuality, and it gets into a whole different level, and you understand that all the you know same night lays or one night stands you've had before of that, that is really just jerking off inside of women. That's the big difference, and. Yeah, you're definitely right. There are many kinds of experiences, but uh, an easy way to go about it. Yeah. I'm sorry? Lots of fun shit to do. Yeah, lots of fun shit to do. I mean, be curious. I mean, bottom line is, we don't, yeah, of course, we want to have a partner, but it's also sex. I mean, we love sex. We, we were made to love sex. It's a big thing in life. And it shouldn't be, you know, this stressful, painful, um, kind of like filled with competition kind of thing. No, it should be a fun experience. It should be like a journey. Does it answer your question? Yeah, perfectly. Cool, man. Awesome. Anything else? You know, you're obviously a guy that has had a lot of success at age 20, and I guess I just wonder how do you how do you challenge yourself these days? <laughs> um, <clears throat> one thing I actually have to say: people always say that that I'm young, and in a way I am. As I said, you know, remember you remember what I said about friendship: you become as your peers. And one thing that has always been good about me is I have friends my own age, but the majority of my friends are always older than me, and I think that is. Um, that is one thing that has led me into, you know, this huge success as this young kid. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I am a regular 20-year-old, but when it comes to this part of my life, I'm quite successful. Uh, and it has to do because, you know, I hang with, I, I, like, m most of my friends are a lot bit older than me. 
Uh, but how I challenge myself, I think I thought about that question many times. And I remember as a kid, I was really, I was really obsessed about heroes. I had a lot of hero worshiping. Uh, I think um, um, the reason for this was I had, like, it, it was very. Uh, my father and my mother had a very, um, like, they, have a, they had a really fucked up relationship, and you know, it was like a lot of fights at home. And I always thought, like, I want to get away. You know, I always, I never liked it. I never, I was never comfortable in my home when I was young. I was always scared, like, what's gonna happen? Uh, what door is gonna get crashed? It wasn't. I mean, it was. Uh, it wasn't that bad. But you know, I was I was a scared little kid. I was a, this fragile kid when I was growing up, actually. And so I turned to hero. I turned to Spider-Man, Wolverine, uh, Superman, Batman, James Bond, and I said, like, these are my heroes. And I started I started thinking about like how I want to become, how I want to become like them. And then what happened was, uh, I don't remember what age I was, but I like the grown-up version of me, like how I thought I would be as a grown-up became my biggest hero. I didn't, like when I was scared, uh, like say I would go to sleep and I'd seen a scary movie and I thought, you know, a vampire is gonna come and kill me. I didn't think about, uh, like, Spider-Man is watching over me. <laughs> you know, I didn't think like, yeah, Batman is watching over me or whatever. I actually thought about myself in a grown up age. And I always held that picture in front of me, that ideal picture of who I am, and thought that, you know, I like the promise I gave myself as a kid to become this person and to become this, you know, my own hero. And I think, I, I don't know if most people are like that, but that's how I was, and I'm holding on to that picture. So I think the reason why I'm quite developed, even though I'm just 20, I think it's because of that, actually. Because I had this, I changed my heroes from fictional characters into who I want to become. So in a way, if you, if you like, if you read, <coughs> if you read Anthony Robbins, or, if, you know, if you read about success, they always tell you to have a clear picture like to have a clear goal. And in that sense, I think I started very young. I mean, I, I wasn't aware of it, but very, at a very young age, I started up painting a really clear picture of who I want to become. And I think that has led me to, you know, really grow and really um, not let the world change me, but be very aware of what I'm growing into, be very uh, conscious about what I develop into. And I think that is it, because I had a this really clear goal of what I want to become at a really young age. But I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't aware of it, it just happened.